Hey guys, I'm Michael Durr and this is Clay Ballard and this is Top Speed Golf and today we're going to talk about how you can get into that nice release position that you see all the tour pros get, on, get into. So Clay, let's just go ahead and take them out into the straight line release. So the straight line release, uh, like, like we talk about in the system, is when we get into about a 45 degree angle after contact. So you can see Clay here, he's got the club splitting the arms in two. And we define the full release as right at this point, right when this club starts to split the arms in two. So this is going to allow us to do a couple things. Just go ahead and show them, Clay. This is going to allow us to get forward shaft lean um, in, in the swing. So at the end of the, your lag position, so let's go ahead and just show them the lag. From here into the straight arm release, or the straight line release, we're going to get forward shaft lean in between those two points. And you can see that's going to be our most critical uh, component of getting this release proper, proper. So what we want to do, here, let me go ahead and set my club down. Uh, what we what we need to understand about this is how our wrists work in the swing. So Clay, let's go ahead and show him, them a flip. Uh, just kind of go slow motion through a flip and just kind of go back and forth uh, with the flip just right there at the bottom. So what you're going to see here is as his wrist goes back and forth, you're going to see the club is going to move very far, very fast. You're going to see that it's going to split the forearms very quickly and then get out of the forearms very quickly. So if we drew a line uh, and there was a laser beam coming out the other side of the club, you would see this line go through the forearms very quickly on one side and very quickly on the other side as it's coming through the ball. This is the flip. This is when the uh, wrists are flexing and extending. This is when you're making like your beach muscle, when you're flexing the forearm, and then when the knuckles are kind of coming back. And when we flip, that's going to send the club through there very quickly. So go ahead and show them one right here. So guys that flip out there, when you're coming down into contact and you're flexing and extending with the wrist and these, these are coming through in a flipping motion, that club's going to pass through there very quickly and it's very hard to get that release out in front. And what we need to do is we need to understand how the wrists are supposed to work. So Clay, let's go ahead and show them how the wrist turn. It's almost like we're turning more of a doorknob. So you'll see Clay, we have almost like a slight little bow in the front wrist and that's going to actually be turning almost like we're turning a doorknob and we're not going to be having the extending move in the wrist. Now, if we understand that, go ahead and show him real slow all the way through, that if he's coming through into the release and he's doing this, you can see how much slower this club is going to be splitting the forearms. It's going to take a much longer time for that club to get in between the forearms if he's releasing in the proper manner. Now, the, the main thing that we need to understand about that is, yeah, we need to release properly, but if we're not moving our body uh, properly as well, we're not going to be able to release that. So if Clay makes a perfect swing and he keeps his momentum in his hips and everything's synced up coming through, he's going to be able to release that club. He's going to have the momentum of his club. His hips are going to be open at contact and they're going to continue all the way on into a full finish. Now, the main thing that causes the flips even when we're trying to release the, ball, the club properly is the stalling of the hips. So Clay, go ahead and show them whenever the hips stall out. That means whenever the hips start to stall, the club is going to take over. The fastest moving point in the swing is going to be the club head. And if we stall the hips, the club head's going to take over immediately and our wrist and arm forearms simply aren't strong enough to hold that speed back. So to get into the proper release, we need to make sure, go ahead and show one more time, make sure that our hips and body are all coming through together and in sync and that we are releasing with the wrist, making sure that they are turning the doorknob through the zone. Let's go ahead and show them one, Clay. All right, guys, so if we understand that, we're going to allow that gradual release to come through the forearms gradually instead of that nasty flip that we all don't want. All right, guys, hope you all really enjoyed this video, but I got a great bonus for you. If we want to be really good at golf, we want to have tons of speed, have a lot of fun, really start cranking that ball, we got to have a lot of lag and then release that lag to get tons of speed. I've got my number one lag video. I'm going to play a preview of that here in a second. If you want to click the link that pops up in your screen, if you're on a computer, if you're on a tablet, a mobile device, you're going to need to click the I card. You'll get instant access to that full video. Plus, you're going to get five videos from my Top Speed Golf system. Good luck to you guys. Good luck with that lag. Go out there, crush the ball, have some fun. I'll see you in the lag video. Hi, guys, and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard, and in today's video, we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see. And in this drill, what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag, and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you, can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case, and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. 
So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, you look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only going to max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be.